Hello everyone uh, and welcome for today's uh, meeting here. So we'll begin off with our uh, classes as usual here. Uh, so in the previous class we had uh, discussed about uh, what is project management. So today we'll be discussing about how the project uh, is to be communicated all right, uh, among the different stakeholders, maybe like your customers or maybe might be, might, might be with your sponsors. Right? How will you communicate your project to those people here? So this is something called as a project communication management here. So what, uh, according to PMI, that is Project Management Institute, most of the projects fails because of the communication issues. So project management is very important. Uh, project management communication is very important so that these types of uh, failures in communication doesn't happen. It consists of uh, three things, all right? Uh, right, what is being sent, what message you are sending, uh, what message it has been received and how it is to be understood by the right people here. There are uh, three primary uh, project communication management process. Basically, they are plan communication management, manage communications, monitor the communications. So uh, these are the things that are uh, there. These are the three things that are there in project management process here. Okay. Now let's look uh, one by one here. First one, you need to plan your communications properly. All right. So how will you how will you plan or how will you communicate to your stakeholders or your customers or your sponsors? All right. First, that you have to plan. What uh, what is the objective of a project communication, and what would be the message that you're communicating to your people? That should be planned here. So there are uh, four things are there here in this. First, you should decide who are your audience. Audience may be like your sponsors, your customers, your team members, and other people who are interested in your project, they may be the audience here. Then, uh, what is the uh, objective of uh, communication? Right? What is the main purpose of communicating uh, this to the customers or your team members or your sponsors and other interested parties here? That uh, should be very clear. Uh, you should make use of some communication for awareness like uh, status report all right, and others that requires uh, actions all right, uh, such as uh, requiring a sponsor to authorize spending or a customer to approve the testing project. So there are these are the objectives of the project communication management. Then you have the message. What should be the content of communication? All right, if you're communicating with your customers, what should be the message that you're communicating to your customers? If you're messaging with a client, you should communicate the message that uh, if they are investing in your business, how fruitful it will be. Right? Uh, if if you are uh, okay, uh, if you are communicating it to your clients, right? Uh, maybe like your shareholders or your stakeholders, what is the amount of profitability they may get if they invest in your project? This message should be quite clear. Then, how will you deliver this message to the customers or to your clients or to your stakeholders? That should be planned out here. Uh, okay, will it, uh, usually it should be in a formal way. That is the most acceptable communication in terms of project management. Uh, an informal would be like a brief uh, a briefing during your team meeting. That is the most favorable communication in terms of when you're having a team meeting here. Then, uh, how will you manage your project communications? All right. First, what you did, what you did is that you had uh, planned your communications. All right. Who would be your audience? What is the objective? Then, what is the message? And how will you deliver your com your communication? Then, then next comes your project managing your project communications. All right. How will you do this? First, you collect the data, maybe like a primary data or a secondary data. Then you will create a message to communicate, right? uh, uh, you'll create a message to communicate to your stakeholders. 
then you will transmit or distribute the messages to your customers, your clients, your uh, stakeholders. Then uh, storage of NE project reports. NE project reports is nothing but like um, you might have had some previous uh, project reports or it may be like uh, if you take for example see your financial status or your financial reports or it, that may be your project reports then certain files to uh, document whether uh, to, to, to have a proof or you can say to uh, okay to have a proof that your project is going to be a successful one those files and those facts are need to be documented then the retrieval of any stored communication or it, so if you have any older communication so how will you uh, connect it or it, that's that is one thing here or it, then disposal of any old communication or it, upon closer date or a set date so you have a particular date you'll be setting or it, uh, one you will set a particular date on which you want to communicate certain uh, reports to your clients or to your customers so this is how you manage your communications here then after that you need to monitor your communications then you have to see that okay like um, whatever things that you're communicating to your uh, clients or to your customers you should make sure that they are monitored properly or right? they are supposed to be monitored properly here all right how will you monitor it first of all you will confirm communication was uh, went as planned or right? whatever you have uh, planned to communicate uh, or however you have planned to communicate that plan went on very well so that you'll be looking here all right uh, then um, okay uh, after confirming or you can say after setting what was planned all right then uh, uh, okay confirming that they have received uh, by the proper stakeholders right so suppose say if you have communicated something to the uh, to your customers or your clients they should get a proper message then confirming that messages were understood by your clients your customers your stakeholders that is to be done then uh, confirming any relevant feedback was provided to the appropriate project members on it so you have to check on whether they have understood the communication or not or whether they have understood the uh, what you can say yeah whether they have understood uh, okay, the appropriate uh, whether they have understood the appropriate project communication or not that you have to make sure about it then uh, your project can be successful only if the communication is proper right the project communication would be successful only if the communication is proper here now let us look here uh, the following other skills can also increase a project manager's chance of success the project can be successful right, if these things are properly done what first of all strong and active listening the project manager should be able to communicate and also should listen to the queries of the customers and the clients and the stakeholders then they should have a good writing skill sometimes you have to write your project reports you have to explain the project reports to them then uh, excellent speaking ability the the customers or your clients or you yourself as a project manager should have the very good speaking capacity then you can uh, your, your customers may ask you questions for which you have to answer or your clients may ask you the questions for which which you might have to be answerable then um, setting and managing expectations so you may expect certain questions or your queries or doubts from your customers or your clients so that you have to set out proper then motivating people to become and stay engaged so you have to motivate your uh, your clients your customers to stay in touch with the project managers all right then if there is any conflict how will you resolve the conflict here that is the uh, these are the key points which you have to remember if you want to pick if you want to make sure that your project is communicated in a well or in a successful manner then for a project to be implemented in a a very effective manner there are certain guidelines right for a project to be implemented there are certain set guidelines first of all 
there should be a well defined project objectives right you should you should be able to understand why the project is to be implemented and what would be the outcome of that particular project if it is implemented this should be very clear then you should be able to uh, understand or you should make sure that your management will involve in it right for a successful implementation of a project management or the top management plays a very important role in project management then only providing money and uh, other resources required for implementation is possible right then you should employ trained and skilled workers right uh, trained and skilled workers should be employed uh, or before implementing the project it should be better that or it should be, uh, it would be better to organize a workshop right? usually um, when a new project is being uh, done or it's, it uh, is planned or implemented the employees or your train or your staff members they are trained first right they are uh, made them aware or they are communicated first through workshops through training or yeah uh, through one day or two days or three days workshops or one week or two weeks training through this you are making your workers skilled or efficient in implementing the project here then effective monitoring uh, system so uh, you should properly monitor whether the managers who have uh, planned the project right whether they are implementing it in a proper way or not right you should continuously monitor suppose if i want to complete a particular project within maybe like two months or three months i have to daily cross verify whether the day to day work is been done or not if it is done well and good if it's not done then my project may get extended and that is one thing then adequate supply of input so before you start off with the project or before the company starts with the project it should make sure that the inputs necessary to make the project or implement the project is very uh, you have sufficient inputs for example say uh, maybe like a, a construction of a building all right if, you, if that's a project construction of a building all right uh, and you want to construct a building maybe like in, for example say within for 6 or 7 or 8 months You have to make sure that the inputs would be like labor, your materials, right? This should be intact. That is what is your adequate supply of input mean. Then your manpower should be very effective. Right? You should plan your manpower. Manpower means number of people required to do or implement that particular project. All right. So this is this is one of the guidelines here. Then after. uh okay like after implementing the project right or after successfully implementing the project you have to do the evaluation part what is evaluation here before you started the project you were expecting certain outcome and after implementing the project the result what you are getting as an output is it the same result what you had expected before you started the project this is what we call it as project evaluation now for example say uh, very recently the government had uh, taken construction of a ring road right uh, one ring road so uh, what happened here is that they were planning okay like to complete that construction of a ring road within 5 years but due to some problems in between the project could not get completed within 5 years it took 10 years right so you are evaluating your project whether can i complete the project on time and as per the expected results or not that is what is called as project evaluation here then uh, in this article let me find out that how projects can be evaluated here so like you have, you'll have number of indicators here what indicators to consider how to design the project evaluation that is to be done here then uh, 
uh, there are certain evaluation methods are there. Right? If I'm taking in terms of financial being, right, there are certain evaluation methods here. Like for example, say return on investment, right? Then you have return on assets, return on capital employed, return on shareholders point. Then you have payback period, right? Then you have uh, net present value method, right? So then you have internal rate of return. So these are the project evaluation methods that you find here. All right. So let's go with the uh, first one you have your return on investment. Suppose say I've invested 10 lakhs on a particular project and the amount of profit that I'm getting on that particular project, that's your return on investment. You have invested 10 lakhs and you're getting up, uh, getting an uh, investment back of 11 lakhs. So normally your profit is 1 lakh. So 1 lakh divided by your 10 lakhs, that becomes your return on investment, right? So this is used, uh, this is in greater use, right? Why? Because if your investment or greater is the ROI or return on investment on a project, the greater will be its acceptability, right? If you have high rate of investment on a particular project and your returns are very high, then the project would be accepted here. Then the amount of uh, investment may mean that the amount of assets, amount of capital invested, and the amount of equity. So there are three things are there here in this. Let's look here, returns on assets. Right. Uh, it is a ratio between net profit and the assets. So total assets, how much you have, maybe like your current assets and your uh, fixed assets, right? Then you compare that with your net profit excluding tax, right? That is what we call uh, profit uh, profit after tax, call it PAT we call, or earnings after tax, right? Earnings after tax. Suppose say like you have earned uh, maybe like maybe like uh, ten lakhs you have earned as a net profit divided by total assets. How much assets you have? Your current assets and your fixed assets, right? And always remember. Uh, they are considered as an asset. Why, why current asset is considered as an asset that you have to understand here. Right? An asset, uh, maybe like a fixed asset, can be converted into cash any moment of time. So you can have enough of cash. Right? That's what we have treated as an asset. Current asset is nothing but the amount of money which you have or you can get it, call it almost immediately. Like for example, your data is. Right? You may not get the money now. But you may get sometime in future. Right? That is why it is considered as an asset. So, how much current assets and your fixed assets you have? You're comparing that with your net profit. All right. That is after the taxes here. Then return on capital employed. Right. So here, net profit excluding tax is expressed as a ratio of the total amount of capital that is invested. All right. The total amount of capital provided by the owner of the firm and the lenders in the total invested capital is in this case here. That is earnings after tax or EAT divided by the total investment. Right? That is how it is being calculated here. Then return on shareholders fund, that is we call it as EPS, right? earnings per share. Right? So how each shareholder would expect what is his share of earnings. Right? Then net profit uh, as you know, after tax, we call it as EAT or the profit after tax right, divided by the total equity shareholders. Right? That is what you get as shareholders fund here. Then payback period. Right? Supposing uh, I've invested in this project 10 lakhs, what is the duration of the time that I uh, the project will take so that I'll get back that 10 lakhs all right, uh, within what duration will I get? All right? How much time will it take for me or for the project to generate 10 lakhs back for me? That is what is called as a payback period. Right. So if an investment project is implemented, if it's the project, invested project is implemented, then the time or the number of years within which the summation of the flow of undiscounted net revenues becomes equal to the total cost of the project is called as payback period. Right. If one of the number of project is to be selected, then the project for which the payback period is minimum should be implemented. For example, say if I'm having a project A right, and I've invested a 10 lakhs, the time taken by the project A may be like, maybe it may be like two years. I have a project B. 
if you have invest same project uh, it's there uh, project b is there if i invest same 10 lakhs i may get the 10 lakhs within one year so definitely i'll i'll invest in all right uh, project b because 10 lakhs i can get it in one year instead of in project b which instead of in project a which takes two years so that is what we call it as a payback period here then net present value all right net present value here you are calculating the probable uh, future revenue that you may get after some time what is its value today right if for example say if i'm getting uh, some maybe like after at a discounted rate i'm getting maybe like five lakhs after two years what is its value today we call that calculation method as net present value through this project if i'm getting after eight months or so not, not after eight months uh, if, through through this project if i'm getting after two years i will get 10 lakhs what is its value today right? that is how is your net present value so here as i've given here in order to obtain the present value of the cash flow of the revenue and cost we shall use the rate of cost of capital as a discounted rate and we assume that the revenue of the particular year would be obtained at the end of the year at the end of the year you are getting some revenue all right and the cost of any year should be paid at the end of the year so normally you will settle out your accounts at the end of the financial year so at the end of the financial year if i'm getting so much what is its present value today that is what is your net present value then internal rate of return ir this is the final and the last uh, uh, project evaluation method here so you have your internal rate of return is the rate of discount that makes the present value of expected revenues to be obtained from an investment project equal to the present value of the cost of the project so here you have the rate of discount that you have you can see a formula over here all right that is c is equal to summation of uh, summation for number of years divide uh, summation of uh, c1 that is your uh, maybe like the first uh, cost of uh, cost of the project divided by 1 plus r to the power of t t here is nothing but the uh, time duration or for how many years maybe like one year two years three years four years all right that is what is the thing here then so or you can uh, cost or if you are taking in terms of cost of the project all right if you are taking the cost it's it is calculated uh, you you will take the cost of each year of the project if you are taking the revenue of each year then you will have uh, revenues for each year for year one year revenue may be like one lakh second year maybe two lakhs third year maybe three lakhs so your revenue is calculated here so these all are the project evaluation methods here this is how the projects are to be evaluated here so uh, i think with this we are uh, i have completed uh, most of the topics that are there in your project management so uh, i really thank you for uh, uh, listening to this lecture if you have any doubts you can comment on the chat section right where, where i can clear your doubts as as you have the if you have any doubts, I'll be able to clarify your doubts. Okay.